around the room and we will get to as many people as we can. We'll take the first question in the back right. Good evening, Valencia King, Real Talk Sports out of Dallas. Jason, it takes a lot of work for these players to get to this level. Part of that work is the experience that they have in the G League. What does it say that 22 alumni are represented in the finals from the G League? Yeah, I think it's uh, that's a great number. Um, also, to let you know that the G League is doing the right thing. Uh, the development of the G League and the, being able to have those players participate um, on the biggest stage. Um, and so, again, um, 22. Um, that's a lot, and so uh, that's a, that's a great honor, and hopefully one of them can have an impact in the series. Right side, Mike. Um, Mike Curtis, Dallas Morning News. Um, Luke and Kyrie have seen a lot of different defenses, um, especially throughout the playoffs. Just how do you expect Boston to defend them, at least to start this series? Yeah, well, you're talking about um, the second best defense. Uh, we saw that uh, the best defense uh, in Minnesota. And so now we're going against the second best. And so understanding they have a lot of great defenders one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And so uh, we expect that they're going to continue uh, to throw different bodies um, at Lou Benkai. Um, and so uh, those two as our quarterbacks, you know, have to be able to read of who's guarding them, uh, guarding them and then being able to uh, get the right guys at the pick and roll. Uh, we tr truly believe those two will make the right decisions, but uh, when you talk about individual defense, uh, Boston is one that will read a lot of the pick and rolls, but also the nice, so it's just play one on one. Howard, back right. Howard, back from the ringer. Hey, Jason. Hey, how you doing? Uh, good. Um, there's been reports that the Lakers might be interested in, in Dan Hurley, which has kind of raised the old questions about whether college coaches can succeed in the NBA. And there have been a lot of different paths there, right? You went straight from playing to coaching without uh, being an assistant. People raise questions about that. Um, everybody's had their own path there. I'm curious, like, do you think there's any one way to do this or, or any commonalities among coaches who have succeeded regardless of whether they were an NBA assistant first, a college assistant first, whatever the, the path may be? Yeah, that, that's a great question. I think there's a lot of different paths. I'm happy uh, uh, we can talk about uh, Hurley being mentioned uh, as a candidate, JJ being a mentioned, two different paths uh, that could become head coaches in this league. Um, both basketball IQ is extremely high. Um, whoever the Lakers choose, that's you know up to them. But when you talk about um, championships, um, Hurley is one, two at UConn. Um, I've gotten to play with Hurley in high school. Uh, he is a warrior, he's a champion, and so uh, coaching runs deep in their blood, in that family, and so uh, if he was to become a Laker, that's, that's incredible for him and his family, but also for the Lakers. But JJ also, you know, uh, has a basketball IQ and understands how to play the game the right way, and so either candidate is gonna be great for the Lakers to uh, choose from. But the path, uh, there's a lot of different paths. Mark Jackson set the path uh, for us who um, gotten older, who could not move uh, to, <laughs> to figure out what we could do next. Uh, so when you talk about you know, the path, Mark Jackson set the path. I've always thanked Mark privately that um, he gave us old timers a chance to do something and still be involved in the game at a high level. And, uh, and so I chose that path, and I got lucky that um, the owners believed that I could do it. In the front, Melissa so, on the right. Melissa Roland, Fox Sports. Um, we all know how much winning the 2011 championship meant to you. Would becoming the first former superstar turned coach to win a championship match or exceed that for you? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, <coughs> I haven't really thought about that. You know, 2011. Um, you know, at the end of that game, um, you know, just understanding what, um, you know, there's no one else to play. We're playing our best basketball. And, uh, you know, being rookies, we didn't know how to really celebrate, um, you know, winning a championship. But when you sit there and you digest the, the situation of understanding that you just won a championship, um, it's just surreal. Um, because as a kid, that's what you dream about. As a kid, you know, you're watching, the third game won, Boston against Dallas, and that's all you're working for is to be able to win a championship because you want to be like Magic, you want to be like Mike. Um, and so um, to be able to do that um, in 11 was incredible. Um, and it's some, something that I will always treasure. Uh, that group of guys that we're linked to with Rick Carlisle as a coach who led us 
uh, was, you know, was incredible. Um, and when we started that journey, no one had us uh, win at a championship, so that was cool too. Uh, Dorothy on the front right. Hey, Coach. Hi, Dorothy. Dorothy Gentry, I'm Messenger Media, Dallas, Texas. Um, what did you tell your players, especially the younger players, about the stage tonight, those who haven't been here before? Yeah, it's no different than the Western Conference stage. It's, it's basketball, it's just a little bit more of you guys. Um, but to, to embrace, as I talked this morning, um, before we started talking about Boston, was the, the, the guys who get all the attention, or most of the attention, um, share it with the younger guys who are getting interviewed. So when it is time for them to get interviewed, they know how to handle it. And so um, I just shared that with those the, with, the, with the team this morning, is, you know, to understand um, Kai and Luca, this is also a great time to uh, share how to handle things with the younger players um, because a lot of them haven't been in this situation. So uh, Luca's been in this situation since he was born. Uh, Kai's been in this situation. <laughs> Uh, for uh, a couple of times now. So uh, for those guys to be able to share it with them um, is my message. Um, and the basketball message is, is basketball um, and to have fun and embrace it and enjoy it. Over here on the left side of the aisle. I'm Robert Littown, BSO. Uh, being a former All-Star Hall of Fame point guard like yourself, how has that helped your relationship with uh, Kyrie Irving and how excited are you for him uh, to be in this final and to see how he's been embraced through this journey through the playoffs? Yeah, I think um, there's, when you talk about Kai um, and Luca as our quarterbacks, um, the respect that we have for one another. Um, I understand we all three have played the same position. Um, those two are, are a little bit more gifted than I am. Um, and so uh, the trust um, for one another, for Kai, myself, I've known Kai since I, I played in New Jersey, um, to see his journey. Uh, he's a champion, um, he's won, and uh, now has us back into the you know, finals uh, on the biggest stage. And he's always enjoyed this you know, situation. Um, he, he always gets to celebrate his birthday first, even though we're born on the same day. Um, but just to understand uh, what he's gone through, um, that you can you, you, you can grow uh, um, from different situations, and he's definitely done that. And, and he's really embraced Dallas, and he's playing his best basketball yet. Last three questions we go in the third row, and over there for two, and then in the back. Uh, Tom Mary's are the clutch points right here. Um, but I was just curious. You may have been asked about this, so I apologize. But um, only three players, I believe, have won, won their first championship. At year seventeen or later, you're one of them. Uh, and Al is trying to do the same uh, this year. Just curious, one, what did you, have you made of, of Al's just perseverance throughout his career getting here? And what do you remember about getting through that many years? I think both of you guys lost in the finals before you finally won one. Like, well, him, not yet, but what do you remember about that? Just trying to get there and persevering through all those years. Yeah, I think uh, when you talk about Al's journey, it's been incredible. Um, it just seems like he's getting younger. Um, you know, just he, he's been on great teams. Uh, he's always been a great teammate. Um, from afar from what I've heard. And so um, just understanding his skill set, uh, being able to guard everyone on the floor um, as a teammate, um, being able to also stretch the floor, being able to shoot the three. And so longevity, uh, he's doing something right. You know, when you talk about eating and taking care of your body uh, and also mentally, um, because it can become draining. It can become where maybe I want to, you know, get on with my life and do something different. But uh, again, his goal is to try to win a championship. Uh, our goal is to try to delay that. Um, but again, he's going to be one that's going to have an uh, impact in this series. Sabra, next. Jason, Shane on the Forbes. I'm curious with the amount of playmaking guards Boston has on the floor at the same time, does that make it harder to want to put two on the ball, or do you still have to throw multiple different coverages at them? Yeah, they've seen their recovery um, just like we've been Kai, so we got to be able to change it up. Um, we can't give them a steady diet of one thing. Uh, they'll pick you apart. Um, again, when you get multiple uh, bodies on, on the ball, uh, that's when the three comes into play. So uh, hopefully we can stay out of that situation. Brad, last question in the back left. Hey, Jason. Uh, Brad Towns of Dallas Morning News. Understandably, you're getting a lot of questions about 2011, but uh, it was 30 years ago this month that the Mavs drafted you, and I was just wondering, what would 21-year-old Jason Kidd think about what 51-year-old Jason Kidd is doing right now? 
<laughs> laugh. Uh, <laughs> no, I think, uh, you know, that's a great question, Brad. I think when you talk about uh, 21, um, you, you're naive and, and understand that you think you're going to win a championship because of Jimmy and Jamal. And, and uh, you know, you've got three young babies out there. You forget about MJ. Uh, and all the other great players in the league, John Stockton and Carl Malone. And so, um, you know, at that time, you know, uh, a well, 21-year-old would say that you have to be crazy to get into coaching. But um, to, to continue to keep working on your craft um, and understand at some point you're going to be able to help a, a group of young men win a championship. And uh, I would I would believe that. And I was hoping that I could get them across the finish line. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Brad.